God at Work, Stories of Grace and Faith. I'm your host, Chuck Groover. And last time, if you listened to that episode, we took a look at the life of George Handel. And today I want to continue by pretty much looking at one of his most famous works. Messiah, or as pretty much is usually referred to as Handel's Messiah. Handel composed uh, the work known as Messiah in 1741, and the first public performance was in Dublin on April 13, 1742, and was performed in London about a year later for the first time. Its initial reception was modest, but eventually it gained popularity to pretty much become one of the best known and most performed choral works in Western music. The text for Messiah, or as I'll refer, you hear it referred to, um, later on, is the libretto was actually written by Charles Jennings, who was a friend of Handel that actually contributed to providing uh, the text or to works including uh, Handel's works of Saul, Belshazzar, and possibly the work Israel in Egypt, or the oratorios, the oratorio Israel in Egypt. And again, as well as providing the text for Messiah. And the text was actually using the King, Jennings used the King James Bible and excerpts from the Book of Common Prayer, some of the Psalms from it, for his text. Um, the text actually begins in part one of the oratorio with the messianic prophecies and moves to the Annunciation to the Shepherds. Part two concentrates on the Passion of Christ and ends with the famous Hallelujah Chorus. And then finally, part three focuses on the resurrection of the dead and Christ's glorification in heaven. The background of pretty much how Handel's oratorios, especially Messiah, came about really started in the early 1730s, where in England the public taste for the Italian opera was actually fading and this was in large part due to the success of John Gay and Johann Christoph Pepbuch, I probably butchered that last name, but their work called The Beggar's Opera, which her heralded a spate of English-language English ballad operas that actually mocked the pretensions of the Italian opera. This led to a decline in ticket sales to operas, and thus Handel's productions really became reliant on private subsidies from the nobility. Also around this time, there was the launch of the Opera of the Nobility, which in essence really made getting these subsidies from, these private subsidies from the nobility actually harder to obtain, and Handel actually went on using some of his own money to fund a, few, some of, a lot of his works. And pretty much while Handel remained committed to the genre of the Italian opera, he also began to introduce uh, English language oratorios as an alternative. Actually, back in 1707 to 1708, he had written two Italian oratorios when he was in Rome, and at that time, under a papal decree, 
opera performances were actually forbidden. So his first venture into the English oratorio was written and performed for a private patron around 1718, and it was called Esther. Then in 1732, he brought a revised and expanded version of that oratorio to the King's Theater, where members of the royal family attended the premiere. And due to its success, it actually led Handel to write two more oratorios, uh, Deborah and Athala. Then in 1735, Handel received the text for an oratorio named Saul from Charles Jennings. But because Handel's focus was still primarily on writing operas at the time, the music for Saul was not written until about three years later in 1738. This was actually followed up by the less successful Israel in Egypt, which it's unknown whether Charles Jennings was also the person who produced the text for that or not. A lot of people believe it was. Or there is some some suggestion that it was Charles Jennings that produced the text for that as well. And while Handel continued to write operas, the trend towards the English language uh, production of oratorios actually became irresistible. And by 1741, Handel had essentially abandoned the genre of operas. And then in July of 1741, Jennings sent Handel the text, or again the libretto for an oratorio of which Jennings wrote to another friend of his, I hope Handel will lay out his whole genius and skill upon it, that the composition may excel all his former compositions as the subject excels every other subject. The subject is Messiah. Messiah was described by uh, Richard Luckett, an early music scholar, as a commentary on Jesus Christ's nativity, passion, resurrection, and ascension. In contrast with most of Handel's oratorios, the singers did not assume any sort of dramatic roles. There was no single dominant narrative voice. Actually, in the liber libretto, Jennings' intention was not to dramatize the life and teachings of Jesus, but actually to acclaim the mystery of godliness. The music for Messiah was completed in 24 days. Uh, Handel began working on it in August, on August 22nd, 1741. He completed the outline for Part 1 by August 28th. Uh, part 2's outline was finished by September 6th, and Part 3 by September 12th. He followed that up with two days of basically filling up to produce the finished work by September 14th. In fact, the autograph score, which I'm not a music scholar, so I'm assuming that's basically the what he had produced by September 14th, was 259 pages in length. And it's said to show signs of, of haste, but according to basically a music scholar, the numbers of errors for a document of that length was actually remarkably small. At the end of the manuscript, Handel wrote the letters SDG, which stood for Soli, Soli Deo Gloria, or To God Alone the Glory. Um, a lot of people look at this as, along with the speed in which Handel composed Messiah as encouraging the belief in pretty much the story that Handel wrote the music in a fervor of divine inspiration 
to where as while he was writing the Hallelujah Chorus, he saw all heaven before him. Although Donald Burroughs, a musicologist and actually leading scholar on Handel's music, actually points out that Handel and pretty much a lot of his contemporaries often wrote many such works with tim similar time scales. Um, before the first performance of, well, with that, that along with the time scales, while not as short of a time scale of 28 days, he, and I'll have a link to in the notes of, again, the resources I used, but some of other, some of Handel's other works again, was produced in pretty much like a month time frame, including, I believe they were talking about the one that followed up after Messiah. Um, before the first performance of Messiah, Handel also made numerous revisions, as well as between 1742 and 1754, he actually continued to revise and recompose movements of Messiah, often to suit the requirements of the different singers, and it's believed that the originally conceived version that was written after that 28 days was probably actually never performed in Handel's lifetime. And in fact, the first published manuscript of <clears throat> Messiah came about eight years after Handel's death and was actually taken from one of the earlier revisions. I'm not sure if it was taken from his original or a later revision, but it doesn't have any of the later revisions after that added to it. So, again, this is Chuck Groover talking about George Handel's Messiah, and that's God at Work. God at Work, Stories of Grace and Faith, is brought to you by Becoming God's Man Ministries, and is written and produced by Charles Groover. If you have any questions, comments, or stories of how God has worked in your life that you would like to share, you can contact us at stories at godatworkpodcast.com or by leaving a voicemail or texting 727-315-0830. If you would like to support God at Work or Becoming God's Man Ministries, you can find out how by going to either godatworkpodcast.com or becominggodsman.com. Opening theme is Fine Line, and closing theme is Airline, both by Geographer and obtained from the YouTube Audio Library. And as always, thank you for listening.